This episode of the AM Archives contains violence. Listener discretion is advised. I'm sure Agent Green will have everything under control. There are protocols. You expected something like this? Of course not. We're just prepared for everyone's safety. But right now, we need to move. We need to find Sydney before he- He's not here. I just checked. You just... Right. Yeah, there's another door that leads to a service elevator. He must have gotten out that way. All right, we need to get back upstairs. No! Please don't leave me alone in here, not again! It's Helen, right? Yes. Please, please don't go. Helen, it's going to be all right. Someone will come back to check on you. I promise. We won't leave you locked in here forever. That is not who we are. From Luminary Media, you're listening to the AM Archives. This is Episode 2, The Electric Man, by Octavia Bray. I wanted to briefly update all of you on the security measures I've taken. Mr. Sandoval is due to arrive this afternoon, and it would be best if we got this under control before he got here. I don't need to give the order another reason to doubt the AM's value. Uh, do I need to be here? I could be more useful. We hired you for patient relations, not security. Best if we let the professionals handle this. You got it, boss. Thank you. Now, I've directed our security teams to perform thorough sweeps of all tiers, with a smaller team doing spot checks of tier 5, Just in case. I did a full sweep of Tier 5 already. He wasn't anywhere. There are plenty of places to hide. This is a very old building. You really think someone who broke out of prison would try to stay inside of it? Far be for me to interrupt an argument. I'm sure you've all had a million times, but there's a murder on the loose, so... She's right. We need to focus. We need to decide what to do next. Um, what? Should we be doing anything? I mean, if security is out there... There are still other patients we need to protect and reassure. Exactly. We went on lockdown with people mid-session, and even though they're safely behind securely locked doors, I imagine this is incredibly anxiety-inducing. We need to find a way to either get to them or communicate with them. Well, I appreciate that some people may be upset. I've got a patient in the mid-bay who needs constant attention or very bad things will happen. If you don't need me here, I'd like to go back to him. Maybe someone should go with you. I'm a big girl, Miss Barnes. Sam. I don't need a babysitter. Wait, d- Is she always that warm and inviting? Yes. yes. In the meantime, the rest of you should shelter in place while security does their job, and Joan and I look over Sydney's file to figure out how best to subdue him. Now there's a plan I can get on board with. Yeah, look, I'm not really a shelter in place, look at files kind of guy. Jackson, there is a time and a place for action. Respectfully, sir, isn't this definitely the time and almost certainly the place? That guy was in Tier 5 for a reason, so maybe we should stop him before he finds a way out of here. There are safeguards in place that should prevent that from happening. Hence, lockdown. If you're powerful enough, and it sounds like this guy is, all you need is time. Trust me, Jackson. We have nothing to worry about. Everything is under control. Sir, may I be excused to go help keep things under control? Jackson? Whoa. Was it me, or was that, like, super fast? Great. He went after Sydney, having almost no information about him. What could possibly go wrong? What do we do? Now I guess we go after him. (sighs) I'm gonna need you to step away from the door. Stay back! I don't want to hurt you. Ooh, glad to hear that. Well, I mean, I want to hurt you. 
gives me a rush. But I want to get out of here even more. Let's glad to hear that. I want my life back. The AM locked me up. Because you hurt people, and man. And you haven't. Murderers get parole, you know. Why should I be any different? That's really the argument you want to make? Treat me like the other murderers? Treat me like a human being! You never even let me outside. Do you know how long it's been since I've seen the sun? Look, I know tier five has- Five years! Inmates get better treatment. Hey, stay where you are! Or what? You lock me up again? I won't let you. Sydney! Sydney, you don't have to do this. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Agent Green, I'll save you for last. Sydney, things are different now that we're in charge. Tier 5 is it's going away. And what? I'm going away with it? The AM is changing, Sydney. I understand that you've been unhappy. Believe me. Unhappy! <laughs> unhappy! I have been trapped in this hellhole for years. I am way beyond unhappy. I... Well... I'm murderous. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa where did she go? I'll explain later. Oh, what's this, Agent Green? Mixing with the monsters? They're not monsters. Maybe... You aren't either. Oh, I'm a monster. If I wasn't before I got in here... I am now. It's not too late for you. No. But it is too late for all of you. Sydney, please. Let's just talk about this. Enough talking. I agree. We're done talking. Why don't you come with me, man? And we can... Phone! Ah! No! Are you okay? Talk to me. My, my, my heart is beating so fast. I bet she says that to all the boys. That's enough out of you. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Talk me to death. I already told you. I'm done talking. Sleep it off, big guy. What did you do? I knocked him out a little bit. What, did y'all just want to keep chatting or? How many injured? Four security guards, but most of them will be fine in a few hours. It's the first one he got to that we should be worried about. <sighs> You've been here for four months, Andrea. Would it kill you to learn people's names? Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Bright. I've been a little busy dealing with a man who might blow up at any second. Whoa, what? Can we please focus? How is Nicole doing? Is she... I mean, she looked... not great. She's in critical condition, but she's stable. Oh my god, Joan, are you alright? Meg said you were, but... I'm fine, Sam. <sighs> You should still get Dr. Sharp to check you out. Or, you know, any other doctor. Really, Sam, I'm fine. You got electrocuted. Yes, Sam, I know. I was there. I'm sorry for checking out of there. I, I Don't just apologize. Figured... You were right. More people would have meant more targets. Well, it's good you were able to take care of yourself. I had my hands full taking care of these two. Yeah, I bet. Thank you for taking care of them. But, uh, can I ask? Where did you go? Tel Aviv, 1973. I have no idea why. Uh, you're a... Time traveler. <sighs> yeah. Not super helpful on a fight. Sounds like you punching Sydney was a lot more effective than anything I could have done. That was really good, quick thinking, Jackson. I wouldn't sell yourself short, Sam. You did break somebody's nose once. Though I will admit that Agent Crawford's right hook was quite something. Thanks. Agreed. I have to say, I'm impressed. Hmm. Yes, things do occasionally impress me. I don't often encounter atypicals with that much control, particularly under pressure. Yes, it was good you were there. You were right about not staying put. It's all good, man. I know we've all got jobs to do, calls to make. True. And I appreciate you making that call for me. It was the right one. Thank you. If you two are done with whatever male bonding ritual that was, we have bigger problems. Right, like what to do with Sydney. Mm, obviously we'll need to put him back in containment. <laughs> it's not that simple. 
I know it's not, but we don't have another choice. The man was willing to cause serious harm. In exchange for his freedom. Sam's right. It's not a clear-cut situation. Protecting the people in this building is a very clear-cut situation. Not when it comes to the cost of another person's rights. He doesn't have I wouldn't it. finish that sentence if I were you, Agent Green. Oh, we're back to Agent Green now. Every time I say something you disagree with, you you're You brought Sam and me in to help change the AM for the better. You need to listen to us when we tell you that things need to change. And I am listening. But we have to be practical. It'll be safer for everyone, Sydney included, if he just stays here. He hasn't been outside in five years. Jackson? Man. Look, maybe this isn't the best place to have this conversation. Sam, Joan, if you come to my office, nah, we can... Nah, nah. Sydney's a patient, right? Well, you hired me to do patient relations. You're saying Sydney hadn't left his cell in five years? That's an exaggeration. All tier fives are exercised. Internally, of course, but still. <laughs> we have acres of land. Why can't we You just... really think that a fence or a couple of security booths could stop an electropath or a powerful telekinetic from getting out? Tier fives need to be exercised internally. Otherwise, Exercised something... internally? Do you understand how that sounds? I'm not the monster that you think I am, Joan. No one is calling you a monster. I don't know. Oh. Five years without sunlight is pretty monstrous. I'm with Sam. Just because we're using first names around here doesn't mean there isn't a chain of command. Do I make myself clear, Agent Crawford? Yes. Director Green. R.I.P. Bonding of two minutes ago. Dr. Sharp. Why don't you go check on our other patient? The one who, as you put it, might blow up at any second? Of course, Director Green. Joan, Sam, Jackson. Fighting isn't productive. Obviously, we all have a different idea of how to handle this situation, but we can at least agree that safety should be our top priority. I agree with that. As Me do too. I. So... What options do we have that ensure both the safety of the public and the safety of the atypical we have in our custody? That's part of the problem. He never should have been in custody. He should have always been in our care. I don't disagree, Joan, but I'm not going to argue semantics. And we have to face reality. Sydney is here because he killed several people. We don't know the whole situation. Plenty of atypicals accidentally hurt others when their powers first manifest. You're right, but 20 minutes ago, he tried to kill you. And maybe, maybe we are complicit in that. Maybe we could have helped him. But I can't change the past, and I'm asking what we do now. <clears throat> Lee Sandoval is here to meet with you all? Tell him to wait at reception. No, I mean he's here, like right behind me. I couldn't get him to stay put. Mr. Sandoval, it's good to see you again. I heard you have an atypical problem. How did you hear? Who's this guy? He's a member of the Order. That cleared up nothing for me. I'll explain later. It's a whole thing. The Order's presence has gone unfelt for too long. Leave your electropath to us. Is that the best idea? The Order has ways of dealing with atypicals who have gone astray. Ways that don't require confinement. Works for me. I mean, I don't know who the hell you are, but it sounds like the best idea. Sounds like the only idea. The only one that'll satisfy all of us, anyway. I'm not sure I'm satisfied. Ugh. I'm just saying Sydney is the AM's problem. If we hand him over to the Order and something goes wrong, Your what? concern does you credit, Director Green. But the Order will take care of Sydney, and you can entrust him to us. Very well. Good. The Order will take responsibility for Sydney from this point on, but... The AM has to take responsibility for making Sydney who he is today. God! Oh. Hi, Jackson. Hi. Sorry. Is there a reason you're sitting silently in the break room with all the lights off? I, I just needed a minute to decompress. Mm. Yeah, I bet. Hell of a first day. It's only 2 p.m. Right. You did great today. Thank you. How are you feeling? Well, physically, I'm fine. And not physically? Well, that was my first time seeing a tier five. I know that every division has one, but... Can I tell you something? 
I've never actually been down there. Really? Seems too spooky. God, it kind of was, to be honest. Not a horror show or anything like that, just dark. Hmm. A little musty. I was expecting something bright and sterile. Yeah, that's the thing about inheriting a building from the Order. It's pretty and all, but full of cobwebs and janky stairways. Yeah, speaking of, I'd love that Order explanation now. Oh, right. Uh, The TLDR is basically that the Order is a secret organization that hardly anybody knows anything about. Kind of the point of a secret organization? Sure, but they kind of created the AM or something, so now they keep tabs on everyone and sometimes make unilateral decisions. Like today? Like today. Lee, Mr. Sandoval, he's kind of new to us. Yeah, he said the Order's presence has gone unfelt for too long. I mean, who talks like that? Adds to the whole skull and crossbones vibe, doesn't it? But, yeah, we didn't have a liaison with them for a long time. Lee being here is part of Joan and Owen's whole make-good thing, I guess. Huh. So, what do we think? Friend or foe? Lee? Ah, I don't know. Dealing with Sydney for us certainly seems friendly. I guess. Hey, was Joan down in Tier 5 with you? Yeah, why? How did she seem? Like... She was dealing with a crisis? Why? She just doesn't go down there very much. Brings up a lot of really traumatic stuff. What do you mean? That's the long, bad story I mentioned. Oh, we we weren't... It's okay. I get being curious. Joan wants to see you, by the way. She's in her office. Yeah, I I was only taking a break to... Jackson, it's, it's fine. I'm sure Joan doesn't want to see you to tell you off for taking a breather after fighting another atypical. (laughs) Right. Guess I'll go find out. A tip? Don't ask about Mark. Mark? Never mind. Come in. You wanted to see me? Yes, I did. Please. Sit. How are you feeling? I'm fine. I I haven't quite gotten my hair to calm down yet, as you've no doubt noticed. <laughs> Look, I wasn't going to say anything. I kind of like it. Reminds me of those cute troll dolls from when I was a kid. <laughs> Since you called them cute, oh, I guess my, I won't take I didn't take mean offense. that you were a troll. Oh. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, I... I called you in here because I wanted to thank you. So, thank you. I was just doing my job. No, you weren't. Your job is patient relations, not security detail or lifesaver. I wouldn't call myself a lifesaver. I would. Jackson, he almost got me. He did get me. Just less than he would have if you hadn't been there to get me out of the way. You saved my life. (sighs) I'm thanking you for saving my life. Just say you're welcome. <sighs> Unless you regret it. No. Of, of course not. You're teasing me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. You're welcome. I won't make a habit of needing saving. I appreciate that. I don't think my heart could take it. I'm glad you're all right, Joan. Me too. Hey, Max, can you run me up that next batch of files? I'm ready to get back to work. is brought to you by Luminary Media and is a production of Atypical Artists. The series is written by Lauren Shippen, Octavia Bray, and Caitlin Schneiderhan. This episode was written by Octavia Bray. In it, you heard the voices of Julia Morizawa as Dr. Bright, Ian McEwen as Agent Green, 
Lauren Shippen as Sam, Bryce Charles as Max, Dion Earl as Jackson, Diana Inosanto as Dr. Sharp, Helen Highfield as Helen, Scotty Shoemaker as Sydney, and Felipe Figueroa as Lee Sandoval. This episode was directed by Lauren Shippen and sound designed by Misha Stanton. Original score by Evan Cunningham. The AM Archives is produced by Lauren Shippen, Jordan Cope, Brigham Snow, and Evan Cunningham. Thank you for listening, and stay strange.